Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Conference Center adjacent to the lab today. Yes. And we've got something a little bit different. This is a specialized server from Advantech, and we've worked with Advantech a lot on servers. They actually are one of the few server vendors or manufacturers that also make their own drives, so that's kind of neat. They've got SSDs. And they have a location that's probably 10 minutes up the road. <laughs> they do. They do have a nearby uh, Cincinnati location. And so when we think about what normal servers in the data center do, they just kind of slot in, they do their thing in a regular size rack. This guy is a uh, technical term for it is a shorty, I believe. Yes. It's 17 inches deep and almost everything's on the front of it, except what do we have in the back? Just power and fans, right? Yeah, power and cooling. But you've got drives, you've got networking and PCIe cards all in the front of this thing. And that's to help make the design so that it can all be accessed from one side and that your hot air blows, well, gets sucked and blown, right, out yes. the back. It sucks and it blows. Yes. And so from a serviceability standpoint, we don't really have the issue of having to work in the hot aisle anymore with a device like this. And it also is engineered to be a little more rugged in terms of standards for humidity and temperature so that when it goes out into the field, typically for this guy in like a 5G deployment, so... One of the best things about 5G is the increased performance we can get from mobile devices and IoT devices and smart cars and all these other things. But one of the downsides is that the wavelength, it's not the wavelength, but it's got a shorter reach than yeah, the 4G Yeah, so you want antennas. things located closer to the person. Right, which means in the 5G case, more antennas. Yes for the same level of coverage and with every antenna you need to have a data center and the data center in this case may not be a building at the bottom or it may not be a large center that that we're accustomed to uh, from AT&T and others but it could be something as simple as a server like this mounted into an enclosure that's attached to the pole or a small thing at the bottom uh, so these server designs are becoming increasingly important also I suppose if you're in a constricted space of some sort, even in an enterprise situation or industrial or whatever, something like this might be interesting. Yeah, it works out well in areas where you might have a shorter rack or just something where uh, you have a location that might not fit a normal longer uh, server profile. Right. And the other thing that's interesting about what Advantech does is that they'll custom order or customize the orders based on customer needs. And they've got a much lower threshold for uh, order counts. So where other vendors might make you a 5G or a short throw server like this, you know, what to your specs, you might have to order a couple thousand. And uh, maybe not the case with Advantech. So if you're looking at something that you want tuned a little bit, they're willing to do that. Uh, walk us through, though, what we've got going on on, on the so front of this guy. On the front, there are quite a number of ports you wouldn't generally find on board with a traditional server. On here, we have uh, 10 SFP plus uh, 10 gig, or we have six 10 gig uh, ports. On board. Which, I mean, <laughs> on some servers, you might not find more than like two, or some servers are just starting to adopt 10 gig. Right. On here, you can get up to six. Okay. Um, and then you have your additional um, uh, one gig uh, interfaces for. Um, uh, boot uh, connectivity and then a uh, IPMI port for uh, management. Okay. Um, On my side, we've got what do we have? Six bays, and this supports uh, SATA, SAS, and NVMe. And we said uh, you know, Advantech makes their own drives. Here's a couple of them that came with this: a SATA product, the uh, 630, and then their SQ Flash, which is an NVMe drive. So another, not that you're going to do a lot of computational work here, but you can. And actually, if you put a couple GPUs in this system and some high-end flash, you could probably do some pretty uh, impressive edge computational analysis stuff where they're looking at images and doing real-time surveillance analysis, things like that, smart city kind of well, thing. Yeah, because it's not just it's not a low-power server in the means where it can only support certain CPUs. I mean, it's a full-fledged uh, dual Xeon platform. Right. Yeah, let's, let's uh, pop the top off of this guy. Come on, fella. Oh, there we go. Lift. All right, so inside then, what are we looking at? In here, uh, we have our um, uh, PCIe cards, which compared to a normal server uh, that you'd be connecting the back end to the back, whatever, this one's a little, a little bit reversed, but you have your um, your edge slots uh, uh, for uh, two rows, and you have, so this is set up where you could have uh, GPUs in here or uh, just enough space to kind of work around a lot of things. Right, there's enough length though here to be able to put two full-size GPUs, right? Yeah. And then you've got some uh, header capper here, so your lower cards need to be 
shorter, but uh, nonetheless, you still have quite a bit of expansion room. Yeah, and this particular server is configured with uh, six SATA bays, although you can configure it with uh, NVMe enabled. So it really depends on uh, what your uh, ultimate configuration is going to uh, require. And then, like we said, around the back, there are some fans and redundant power supplies. Nothing too terribly fancy here, but all field serviceable should you need. Um, and and that, uh, that's yeah, nice. And the fans specifically, cases. you can swap the fans without even opening this chassis. They just pop up from the rear. Okay. Well, cool. Let's take a quick look here at uh, some of the other highlights. So we've got uh, an overview on on the specs you have 440 millimeters i guess that's 17 inches i'm not really sure about the conversion there but possibly i do not have my calculator out <laughs> it should be close uh, as noted dual uh, dual socket second gen intel so you know legit cpus to kevin's point not uh, not dumbed down at all plenty of ram and uh, the connectivity for storage the internet uh, connectivity and then a couple of the M.2 bays. You actually messed around with those in the testing too, didn't you? Yeah. So with this, um, I mean, a lot of this, a lot of the servers, they're going to be still perform similarly versed uh, compared to where other servers might um, uh, kind of fall in line. But in this case, it's going to be loaded with a lot of different storage types. So in here, we showed a, um, uh, we have a uh, edge card, um, courtesy of. Um, uh, Memblaze. Yes, Memblaze, the uh, 926, I believe, right. or uh, by 8 uh, version, which offers a little more bandwidth. And then we used uh, two Toshiba XG, uh, XG5 uh, uh, M.2 SSDs, uh, one terabyte in size. But our focus is more towards here's some bursty storage, here's some enterprise storage, and just kind of try them against one another. Not saying like one's better than the other, sure. but just what you can pack inside of this. And that's in addition to the six bays. So you could fill the six bays up with capacity SATA, use the M.2s for your redundant boot if you wanted to, and then an edge card for high performance uh, data if, if you'd have that need. Um, so going back to check out the rest of the specs, we've covered off on most of that uh, with the card support at the bottom. And then we get to the hard hitting architecture design. Yes, there is not a lot of information on the servers. So, I mean, one interesting thing is it's a unique form factor, which you're probably, if, you, if you're looking for this type of server, you're not going to be cross-shopping this against a traditional um, uh, tier one, tier two type of server. Yeah, you vendors. may not be looking at ProLiant and PowerEdge. Yeah, so it has a different type of profile associated with it. But okay. it's, it's a fun diagram. <laughs> Good. Um, the uh, KVM support, it's uh, HTML5 based and fairly intuitive. Uh, it gets right to the point for a lot of the uh, feature overviews and allows you to drill into CPUs, memory, storage, networking, and so on, and also works for a uh, KVM. And we used it for installing the OS, getting that, uh, that stuff going, and it's really painless. Okay. Well, that's good because we don't always see nice management software in servers. Yeah, and I have a feeling when this thing goes out into the field, it'll probably be only touched a couple of times. It's more of the, it's the type of thing where unless the cell tower it's put on is burning down or a component fails, you're really just gonna set it and forget it and hope that no one ever has to go out to it. And that's why it's designed around the more rugged scenarios. Okay. So we talked about a little bit about the performance. You put in a fast edge card and then a couple M.2s just to give viewers a, a perspective on capabilities here. Yeah, so the onboard M.2 bays are um, their NVMe, not uh, SATA. And with that, it offers uh, some pretty decent performance. So with two of the uh, Toshiba cards uh, combined, it came under around two and a half gigs a second read. On the uh, edge card side, that guy came in an access of uh, was like 5.3 gigabytes per second. On the uh, sequential write side, around uh, one gig a second uh, combined for the um, uh, XG5s, and then an access of uh, 2.5 gig a second on the uh, edge card. Uh, and then random read, you're going to come, it's going to be pretty good on the NVMe side. So uh, with one card, we we still came in shy of a million IOPS. But again, if you're running multiple NVMe devices, you'd be getting some pretty good numbers from it. Um, and then on the um, uh, more consumer uh, OEM variant of the M.2 drives, in excess of 600,000 IOPS. So it does pretty well. So overall, a uh, 
really flexible chassis for something that's only 17, 17 inches deep, which is pretty amazing. You get your six bays, you've got the full height, full length uh, PCIe cards if you want that uh, for storage or GPUs. And if you want something that's a little bit different than this build, Advantech will go make it for you if you buy enough of them. Um, but overall, it's an impressive little short system that, of course, it's designed for 5G, but there are so many other applications, especially in industrial uh, and edge computing, where something like this, where you just need something short, uh, but still is fully featured and fully capable, uh, would be a great fit. So overall, we're, uh, you know, uh, impressed again by what Advantech's doing and look forward to uh, seeing more of their gear in our lab. Until then, thanks for tuning in.